One thing about marriage, folks. Many are made in heaven, but there are others that are unmade by the fourth application of the vow. Unto death do us part. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. That's the name, Barry Craig. You rent an office on the third floor of the old mercantile building. You've got a city license which says you're a confidential investigator. So most of your life, you sit around and wait. Some of the guys in the business hire blondes and call them secretaries. Others confide in cab drivers, bend bartenders' ears, even buy dictating machines. Maybe it helps them forget that they're the loneliest guys in the world. Because nobody really talks to you. The suspicious wives, the frightened parents, the desperate kids who walk into your office never even see you. To them, you're a license, a pair of ears, and sometimes a gun. Nothing human. And after a while, maybe you're not. It's open. How, how do you lock this door? There's a thing underneath the doorknob there. You slide it over. Oh. You're Barry Craig. Yeah. You're not doing very well, are you? I could write my name on the dust on your desk. What name would that be? Wilma Lord. How do you do, Miss Lord? Mr. Craig, have you ever killed anyone? Not for a fee. Will you answer a question about the weather? I don't know much about the weather. Well, why'd you lock the door behind you, Miss Lord? I can't have anybody see me here. There's a woman comes around a couple of times a week. I'll speak to her about the dust. Oh, that's not... I'm going to marry a man named John Waring. Uh-huh. He's older than I am, a lot older. It's a question of taste. He's rich. Sweetens the taste. We're going to be married in a few weeks. I want nothing to happen to that marriage. I'll hire you. Cupid Craig, with a dollar sign in front of the Cupid. What do you think might happen? Death. Something wrong with Waring's health? You've heard of murder, haven't you? I've heard of it. Whose murder, yours or Waring's? The door's locked. Who's murder? I can't see. Is there another way out? Back of the water cooler. Leads to the back hallway in the fire stairs. I- I'll phone you. Sure. Yeah? Get, get out of my way. That gun a little heavy for you? I said... Okay. Well? The day. Where's the day? You don't look too good. Where is she? Got a name for her? The dame. Walked in the eye, seen her. And now you want to take another look? Why not? Give her back a knife. Knife. Uh... The floor stopped him. I kicked the door shut behind him. The knife he'd mentioned was angling out between his shoulder blades. I didn't want anybody to confuse him with a client. The homicide squad arrived and went to work. I don't like watching the boys. They're too smooth. I start thinking of all the stiffs they practiced on. I shut my eyes. Are we boring you, Craig? Lieutenant Rogers, I've seen it all before. Too bad. If only we could work out an entirely new approach. Then perhaps you'd watch us, hmm? Stop being so tough, Trav. Everybody's forgiven you for having gone to college. Thanks. You're welcome. Craig... The story's no good. The only one I've got on hand. I'll tell you why it's no good. The punk there with a knife in his back was on the Harry Otis payroll. Oh? Well, my lord is on the Otis payroll. Must be a large payroll. Among his varied and largely illegal activities, Otis also runs a separate club over on the east side. The Gilded Lily. Mm-hmm. You can have Wilma Lord for supper there six nights a week and twice on Sundays. It's too early for supper. In the last couple of months, Otis has been very busy hovering up. The Crime Commission? The Crime Commission. Mr. Otis is a very large target for them. He's been doing his best to shrink recently. 
Woman Lord could have come to you because she planned to concertize with the commission and wanted protection. Why me? You're big. You're good-natured. And, uh, well... I'm stupid? No, no, no. But you like to believe people when they give you a chance to. What about the wearing angle? Did she pick him out of the phone book? There is no wearing angle. John Waring happens to be a distinguished philanthropist. That means a guy with so much money even gives some of it away. Thanks for the translation. I still believe Wilma Lord's story. Why? Because she's young, beautiful? Because she looked you straight in the eye when she told you all? <laughs> no, Tram. Because she was nasty. Homicide wound up and went away. One nice thing about it, after they were through, the office no longer needed dusting. The clock in the church tower across the street made noises. So, after a while, did my stomach. But I was waiting for a phone call. Maybe the cops would get Wilma Lord before she could reach a phone. Maybe Wilma Lord had no intention of phoning me. I've been a sucker before. I prefer it to being a wise guy. So I listened to the bell gnawed my stomach and was rewarded. Hello? Uh, Mr. Craig? Yeah. It's late. I thought you might have gone home. I'm still here. You're alone? Yeah. I I've got to see you. That is, if after what happened you want to. I want to. I always believe a client. I didn't know you'd... You'd taken the case. Where do we meet? Well, not here at my apartment. It's too dangerous. Wait a minute. Would there be a couple of cops sitting on your lap by any chance? No. Why not? They've got an alarm out for you. Well, the apartment isn't in my name. Look, let's make it the park, the 67th Street entrance, in an hour. The park in an hour. Oh, Miss Lord. Yes. Don't bring a friend. I locked the office door. Nothing in the office worth stealing, but this way, maybe I could tempt a burglar. I felt underprivileged. I'd never been burgled. Hey, Mr. Craig. Never mind the glad greetings, Jake. Terrible tragedy you had, Mr. Craig. That's what I meant. Stop licking your chops and let's ride downstairs, huh? Terrible tragedy. Lieutenant Rogers says he didn't bleed much. You take the lieutenant's word for it. By the way, Jake, uh, did the corpse come up in the elevator? Lieutenant asked me that. A coincidence. Did he? Yeah. Come up in the elevator. Didn't have that knife in his back at the time, though. Maybe the elevator was too crowded. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. How about the girl? She come up the same trip? Lieutenant asked me that, too. Whatever made you give up that farm in Vermont, Jake? Got tired of watching the Four Seasons. What I told the lieutenant was, maybe she did come up in the elevator, but but I didn't see her. Uh-huh. How about opening the door? And if she was young and pretty, like the lieutenant said, why, I'd have spotted her. Sure. After all your experience with the four seasons. Jake, how about... Oh, I keep forgetting. Mr. Craig. Yeah? In case anybody stops around and asks for you, what will I tell him? Tell them I'm out checking a season. Good night, Jake. The park was close enough so I could take a couple of hamburgers aboard at Willie's wagon. A couple of hamburgers and a cup of the stuff Willie calls coffee. Willie keeps his coffee urn shined. I was facing it. What I saw in the urn looked like what you see in the distorting mirrors in the Coney Island Funhouse, except not so funny. Willie! You got a complaint? Take it up with the mayor. Take a look over my left shoulder, Willie. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. You want I should pin a gardenia on it? Somebody looking into the wagon had his face plastered against the window. I don't want to turn and tip him off. Huh? You hitting the pipe again? No face. I bet you inhale, too. Oh, forget it, Willie. He must have ducked. Here. Take that up with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Boy, you throwing dough around. What's the matter? You had a horse in the fifth? No. I had a corpse in the third. The park was half a dozen blocks over and west. I couldn't spot a tail on me, which didn't mean a thing. Good tails don't get spotted, especially working on me. 
I'm easy to keep in sight from a long way off. Nobody had moved the park around. The 67th Street entrance looked cozy and dark. I tossed a mental coin, came up head, which meant I should go home and spend a few hours of sleep. Then I cheated. I went on into the park. An investigator's job is a funny one. Either you play it hard and believe nobody, which is fine. It's safe. You stay out of trouble. Maybe after ten years, you're growing ulcers because nobody likes you. But an ulcer never killed anyone yet. Or else you believe people. Then you've got trouble. You're not smart. Except maybe it's not a choice. Kept getting darker. Not a choice because it depends on the way you're built. The way I'm built, you stick your neck out. I did. Only warning was a slide of feet on the gravel path. <laughs> if you hit on the head hard enough, you get knocked out. All you remember afterwards is getting up. It's a memory you're willing to trade cheap. The guy looks like he is returning to us, Mr. Mm. Otis. He might have fractured his skull, people. Private eyes have got mm. very thick skulls. All I know oh. is I read about them all the time. Private eyes are always getting bopped on the skull. It don't bother him. It bothers me. People help the gentleman. Never mind. Mr. Craig. I've got a headache. I'm sorry. Viper is so enthusiastic. Send them over a little closer to me. I'll calm them down. <laughs> I'm afraid not, Mr. Craig. Beeper is armed. He was acting on instructions from me. Was he supposed to bring me in alive? <laughs> I'm not that funny. How did he find me in the park? He trailed you there from your office. Uh-huh. Rather a cold, unpleasant night, Mr. Craig. You often walk in the park. I managed to get there from time to time. You wouldn't have been meeting anyone there? I could use a couple of aspirins. Hmm. Beeper was perhaps a little impatient. How was I supposed to know he had a point? Beeper. I beg your pardon, Mr. Otis. Well, Craig? I could still use those aspirins. I see. Well, perhaps it isn't very important. What's more to the point? Mr. Craig, you had a visitor this afternoon... I had lots of visitors, most of them in uniform. <laughs> I'm referring to the gentleman who preceded the police, the gentleman whose untimely death was responsible for the visit. You didn't happen to kill him by any chance? The cops didn't think so. They might be prejudiced. Also, you may have pleaded self-defense. Otis, you know better than that. A man like you has pipelines to the department. Very well. A question, then. What was the gentleman... You mean the punk with the knife in his back doing in your office? He was dying there. Hey, I'm hearing music. A ringing in my ears? A rather good little orchestra. They'd be insulted by your description. Don't tell them about it. This wouldn't happen to be the Gilded Lily, would it? You know the place? Sure. Some of my best friends have had supper in it. What was Jimmy doing in your office? A punk? He might have been looking for a confidential investigator. Oh, for what purpose? To help him find his lost innocence, maybe. Beeper. I'm not joking. What job was he doing for you? What makes you think he was doing anything at all for me? He was on your payroll. Indeed. The cops told me. They're blabbermouths. Mm, pity about the civil service. Things would be so much easier otherwise. You could buy more for less, huh? You're not going to tell me why Jimmy came into your office? I didn't say that. I'll tell you why. He was looking for the owner of the knife in his back. Oh. He never got around to telling me who it was. Would you like some information? Very much. At what price? We'll discuss that later. The information goes like this. Your boy came up in the elevator. He didn't have the knife in him then. He did have when he got to my office. So... Someone presented him with a knife someplace between the elevator on your floor and your office. Yeah. One thing more. It wasn't right outside the office door. Oh, he got it near the elevator. He went down. There were a couple of bloodstains on the hall floor indicating that. He went down, stayed down for a while, pulled himself to his feet and made it to me. Why? You didn't like my previous suggestion? No. Craig, whom did Jimmy follow to your office? It'd be nice to know, wouldn't it? I mean, for me. Because you know, don't you? 
You mentioned something about a price for the information. What price? What do you think about matrimony? I have no time to discuss philosophy at the moment. Or philanthropy? Beeper. Yeah, Mr. Otis. Up until this moment, I've been considering Mr. Craig an honest, if somewhat stupid man. Now, I'm not so sure. Yeah? Either of his honesty or of his stupidity. I can get your references on both counts. I would like to be sure, Beeper. I take him apart? Unless Mr. Craig would like to tell us another story. I'm out of story. You're in trouble, however. Beeper, we want Mr. Craig to explain his remarks about matrimony and philanthropy. Yeah, hold it, Craig. I wouldn't mind plugging you in a leg, say. Give me an excuse. You're going to stand and take it nice? Okay. Take it. <laughs> I hope the gun barrel don't scare you permanent. How about putting your arms behind your back, huh? Going to start getting painful soon. Thanks. Now, hey, who? Opportunity knocks. No, Otis. I've just inherited a gun. Beepers. You weren't expecting company. Mr. Otis, I've been knocked unconscious. I've been pistol whipped. Maybe I'm sore. I wasn't expecting company. Yeah, that's the reason Beeper was startled. All right, open the door. Let's see who it is. Hello, Mr. Otis. The Marine. Hello, Trav. Hi, Craig. Mind if I come in? The office belongs to Otis. You're holding the gun. That belongs to Beeper. Beeper? He's lying down. Tired? He ran into a doorknob. Have a gun on him. Thanks. Who knows? Maybe he has a license for it. We'll see. Exactly what do you want here, Lieutenant? We've had the place staked out. Nobody we were interested in showed up. I got the report that a big man was carried in. Turns out it was Mr. Craig. That's how it turns out. The place staked out? And you're looking for... If nobody minds, I'll get out. In a hurry, Barry? I'm late. For what? A date. Now, wait a minute. Way it looks, you were slugged and brought here. I guess it does look that way. You could prefer charges. Uh Uh-uh. It was all in fun. That wealth across your face doesn't look funny. One of the reasons I'm in a hurry. What? I want to have the nasty little bruise kissed away. <laughs> Lieutenant Rogers didn't argue with me. He wanted conversation with Otis and Beeper. Nobody had mentioned Wilma Lord yet. Not Otis, not Trav. But they were thinking of her. So was I. I tried to park. A couple of hours had died since the appointment, but I had to make sure. I made sure. Maybe Wilma Lord had been waiting for me. Maybe not. Either way, she wasn't waiting anymore. Trav would annoy Otis for a while. He had nothing to hold him on. He had nothing to hold Beeper on. For a while, Otis and Beeper would be busy with the lieutenant. After that, they might be busy about something else. I remembered Trav's definition of a philanthropist. I could use some money. My name is Barry Craig. Yes? You're John Waring? I am. Mind if I come in? It's rather late. So late you sent the butt to the bed, huh? Well, that is hardly... Who did you say you were? Barry Craig. Should I know you? Yes. Why? Because you're a philanthropist. Good night. I didn't finish. Because you're a philanthropist about to get married. Come in. Thanks. In here, if you please. Well, then. Your name is Barry Craig. Uh, You're a reporter, perhaps? Not exactly. Then why your interest in my... Marriage? I've been hired to make sure it goes through on schedule. Hired? By whom? Your fiancé. My... Didn't I use the right word? You mean Miss Lord? How many girls were you planning to marry? Mr. Craig, I permitted you to enter my home because you seem to know about... about my marriage. I didn't expect you to insult me. I'm sorry. Blood gets on my nerves. Blood? A man was murdered in my office today. Then that's why... That's why what? Nothing. Uh, This man who was murdered, had he any connection with... Your marriage? Yes. 
What do you think? I can't think anything about it. I, I, I'm confused. So confused you haven't thought of offering me a drink. I beg your pardon. Oh. Yeah. I could almost think you were expecting me. That's two glasses you've got sitting on that coffee table. I... With the drinks in them. One's rye by the color. The other... Uh, Mr. Craig, you're in my home. Looks like cream de menthe. A girl's drink. I suppose it's too much to expect the behavior of a gentleman from a confidential investigator. Yeah. We're the sordid type. I had an appointment with Miss Lord. She kept it, didn't she? Why don't we ask her? Ask nice drapes you've got. Pity they don't quite reach the floor. Now, look here, young man. Never mind, John. Hello, Miss Lord. Hello. Did you decide the park was too cold at this time of the year? I... What made you come here? You wouldn't be holding up in your apartment, listed in your name or not. The cops are bright nowadays. Well... Where else would you duck for cover? It was simple. Lucky for me, it was simple. I get confused easy. What do you want? You hired me to do a job. I believe you. I always believe my clients. Sometimes I'm suckered, sometimes not. Because sometimes clients don't expect to be believed. I resent all this. Don't this... be in too big a hurry, Mr. Waring. Miss Lord was afraid that the marriage was going to be interrupted by murder. Murder? She didn't get around to telling me whose murder, yours or hers. Because another murder happened to somebody else. I didn't... Somebody on Harry Otis's payroll. Whose idea was this marriage? I... I asked Miss Lord to be my wife. And she said yes. Why? I love... You don't have to laugh at me. Harry Otis. You were on his payroll too, Miss Lord. The crime commission was getting ready to ask him questions about his business, his tie-ins with officials, his, uh, backers. I must ask you... You were going to say leave. Let's pretend it was explained. Wilma Lord's young. She's beautiful. Maybe she could have wrangled a marriage offer out of you anyway. But her working for Otis can't be a coincidence. Sure you asked her to marry you. After she told you she knew about your connection with Otis. My connection? Financial. Dollar bills don't have pedigrees on them. That's a shame. How many of the dollar bills making up your bank account came out of Harry Otis's dirty enterprises? This is absolutely, absolutely unwarranted. No. Up until five minutes ago, it was a guess. A stupid guess. Because I couldn't figure any other reason for the whole deal. Now it's not a guess anymore. It's not a guess <gasps> anymore. Oh. Hello, Otis. I've been expecting you. And the gun. That's nice. Beeper's outside with a gun, too. And the car? With a motor idling? Another stupid guess? Sure. The stupid ones give the most trouble. You'd had brains enough, Craig. You'd have stayed out of this. I couldn't. I was hired by Miss Lord. I had to, Harry. I was I afraid. had you set up. Waring was going to marry you so you couldn't testify against him. Why'd you bury the knife in Jimmy's back? I didn't. I had him on you all the time. Would you have had any reason for killing him, Otis? What reason? Not even a stupid guess. Otis. Yes. This, this squabbling. It's unpleasant and uh, a waste of time. Meaning what? Whatever Miss Lord did or didn't do, Mr. Craig is now in a position to inform the Crime Commission of... of... Our business association? Yes. That would be disastrous. Not only for myself, but for you as well. I, uh... I hesitate to suggest anything violent, but, uh... But what choice have we got? Precisely. No, there's been... Shut up, Wilma. You've still got Jimmy's death to account for. Oh, you... You... Miss Lord! What? Don't drink that! What are you talking about? My away. You in a hurry to die? The man is, is insane. Otis. Yeah, Otis. The man looking for a murderer. What was wrong with the drink? Another guess. A solid one this time. Wilma Lord's wanted by the police for the murder of your punk. Wilma Lord disappeared. Suppose she died in this house. Waring would have the body what? Buried? Burned? Either way, no more Wilma Lord. The cops would spend the next century looking for her. The case would be closed. Oh, no. Also, John Waring wouldn't have to marry her. He'd be rid of a witness against him. What he had in mind for you, Otis, I wouldn't know. But he had something in mind. Then he'd be free. He could go on being philanthropic. This is... It's childish melodrama. Murder's melodrama. Only it's not childish. Mr. Waring, when I walked in here, you asked me if I was a reporter. The gag being you'd never seen me, heard of me before. But a little later on, you said something about a confidential investigator not being a gentleman. He must have followed me, too. You said Wilma Lord had kept her appointment with me. How did you know? If she told you, you wouldn't have confused me with a reporter. If she didn't... Wait a minute. He was checking on her because he was planning to get rid of her. But your boy Jimmy spotted him on the third floor where my office is. 
Nobody else would have had any motive for killing him. Waring had to because it tipped his hand about his plan for the girl. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Then suppose you drink this, huh? I... I detest creme de menthe. Drink it, Waring. I... I shall leave now. I find this highly... I disgusting. said drink it. You're being a fool. A fool. <laughs> had to be done. Done. The reason I knew the drink was poison. Take a sniff at it, Otis. Don't bother. A deep sniff. <laughs> so sorry. Got it in your eyes. Thanks for the gun. Hey, you... Mustn't lose your temper. Waring killed Jimmy. Sure. But you had to kill Waring, didn't you? If you'd turned him over to the cops, he'd have blabbed. The crime commission. Beeper! Beeper? (laughs) You know something, Otis? You must be a sinking ship. That was it. All wound up, I went home, I slept. The next day, I was back on the third floor, being lonely. How do you lock this door? There's a thing underneath the doorknob. Oh, you remembered. Somebody following you again? No. I just don't want to be interrupted. At what? Thanking you. I don't have any money. I'm not marrying a rich man anymore. But I don't think you'll mind. Oh. I always believe a client. Good night, folks. See you next week. have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, The Case of the Borrowed Knife, was written by Lou Vitez. Next week, it's an exciting story titled Dead on Arrival, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, I devote my time to a bashful blonde, an escaped lunatic, and a stone-cold corpse. And brother, is it murder? See you next week, folks. Featured in the role of Wilma was Elspeth Eric. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan is under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. This Sunday night, be sure to hear The Big Show with a full 90 minutes of outstanding entertainment. This Sunday, The Big Show will present such stars as Sophie Tucker, Morton Downey, Ann Sheridan, Jerry Lester, and your glamorous, unpredictable hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. The Big Show brings you a sparkling program presenting drama, comedy, music, everything to provide you with the biggest show in radio. Yes, for people in the know, Sunday means The Big Show on NBC. Then later, Sunday night, Theater Guild on the Air presents Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, starring lovely Claudette Colbert and MacDonald Carey. Yes, there's 60 minutes of top-flight drama coming your way this Sunday as Theater Guild on the Air brings you Age of Innocence. And for photos as well as feature articles on your favorite NBC stars, be sure to buy the current NBC Silver Jubilee issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine. This Sunday... Hear the best, hear the big show, and Theater Guild on the air, both on this, your NBC station. Back hallway in the fire stairs. Uh, I'll phone you. Sure. Yeah? Get get out of my way. That gun a little heavy for you? I said... Okay. Well? But there... 
Where's the dame? You don't look too good. Where is she? Got a name for her? The dame. Walked in the eye, seen her. And now you want to take another look? Well, I give her back a knife. Knife? The floor stopped him. I kicked the door shut. Can't have anybody see me here. There's a woman comes around a couple of times a week. I'll speak to her about the dust. Well, that's not... I'm going to marry a man named John Waring. Uh-huh. He's older than I am, a lot older. It's a question of taste. He's rich. It sweetens the taste. We're going to be married in a few weeks. I want nothing to happen to that marriage. I'll hire you. Cupid Craig, with a dollar sign in front of the Cupid. What do you think might happen? Death. Something wrong with Waring's health? You've heard of murder, haven't you? I've heard of it. Whose murder, yours or Waring's? <gasps> the door's locked. Whose murder? I can't say. Is there another way out? Back of the water cooler. Leads to the back. Barry Craig speaking. That's the name, Barry Craig. You rent an office on the third floor of the old mercantile building. You've got a city license which says you're a confidential investigator. So, most of your life, you sit around and wait. Some of the guys in the business hire blondes and call them secretaries. Others confide in cab drivers, bend bartenders' ears, even buy dictating machines. Maybe it helps them forget that they're the loneliest guys in the world. Because nobody really talks to you. The suspicious wives, the frightened parents, the desperate kids who walk into your office never even see you. To them, you're a license. One thing about marriage, folks. Many are made in heaven, but there are others that are unmade by the fourth application of the vow. Unto death do us part. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. A pair of ears, sometimes a gun, nothing human. And after a while, maybe you're not. It's open. How, how do you lock this door? There's a thing underneath the doorknob there. You slide it over. Oh, yeah. You're Barry Craig? Yeah. You're not doing very well, are you? I could write my name on the dust on your desk. What name would that be? Wilma Lord. How do you do, Miss Lord? Mr. Craig, have you ever killed anyone? Not for a fee. Will you answer a question about the weather? I don't know much about the weather. Why'd you lock the door behind you, Miss Lord? 